psychologist Alejandro Ibarra, international psychologist. Very happy, very nice meeting you. Thank you for giving us your time, especially among these unprecedented times. As people know, I'm Luigi Pesce. I'm the business development coordinator and health policy analyst, among other things, with uh, Disruptive Technologies. It's a think tank that we really care about the how technology is affecting, whether positively or negatively, the disruptor. The disruptor would be you, me, people that are in the field, especially in their work. So you're a trained psychologist, you are specialized in obsessive compulsive disorder, the anxiety disorder, not the personality disorder. How, how has been your life recently, coming from Venezuela and establishing your practice in, in Spain? Oh, thank you for having me, Luigi, here in the, in the video. To me, it's a, a very good pleasure to be here with you and all the community and all the OCD community. To me, it's a, I feel very happy to, to be here in, in Spain and do my work with uh, clients or suffer with OCD. And to me, it's a responsibility to work with, with this community to to all the, the sufferers. For you, you will say it's sort of like a duty because of the rapid increase of cases that we have seen in OCD. It, now it is 3% of the population as opposed to 2% 10 years ago when I started studying psychology and the population has overgrown. With or without pandemic, now we're getting to the 8 billion. So that means there's a lot of people, there's there's definitely a lot of impairment, negative effect that happening in this life. Uh, before we reach the technology part, let's go real briefly about some sort of the stigma and ignorance and people have about um, OCD. We get to hear it very often uh, as a common term when you people that are a little bit detail oriented or very not not as spontaneous. They don't you know live by the moment. They they get called OCD. Usually everybody says they have their own boss, OCD. We've seen it on television show like Friends, where we had on a museum the characters of uh, Ross and Joey start fighting and protesting, and all of a sudden you got a guy that screamed that he needed to turn on and turn off 16 or whatever many times the light before he leaves his house every morning or his family will die. Something that made no sense back then. But then when you study OCD, you realize, okay, that was a ritual. That was an obsession and a compulsion that the person had. What can you tell me besides the statistics about talking every day with these patients? How, how do they feel? Like, how do they see themselves in this situation? Are they hopeful? Do they, do they trust that things will get better? That's a, a really good question because uh, some series like Friends or, or TV shows or movie, uh, doesn't doesn't look the the very or the high impact in OCD in all OCD community. That's just a uh, just a part of OCD. OCD is not just washing your hands or checking a door or checking a window. OCD is more of of this kind of ritual. Remember that uh, there there are a, a lot of clients or suffer that don't have ritual visual ritual. They are or they are suffering with mental rituals, reassurance seeking is a kind of mental rituals, or uh, checking mental or reviewing or praying, this kind of ritual are mentals. It's, the, it's like the invisible side of OCD. It's not washing your hands just only. But do the embarrassing factor, do the societal factor plays a role on people that have an OCD? Like, for example, you say that a lot of these obsessions don't necessarily end up in the compulsion. They deal a lot with, you know, coping with the stress of just reducing their thoughts and not having actually to do the, uh, the ritual, which it, most of the times is, is just create an open-ended cycle. So it's better to kill it at the, whenever they're having their, their, their thoughts. But when you, when you say it's not visible, do, do patients often feel like these rituals only happen when they're alone in their house by themselves or, you can see someone on on the bus, on the on a movie theater. Back then, when we when life was normal, uh, counting with his fingers, showing physical expressions of the thinking and the 
constant thoughts that don't go away? Can you can someone actually see a person dealing with these uh, OCD symptom lights? Definitely, this is a difficult, the difficult part of OCD because these rituals are not visible. The, the person can move into a subway or a train or an airplane. Usually are thinking inside their, their mind, inside their head, because there are no visual rituals. So that is uh, very difficult to, to get the, the proper diagnosis and the proper treatment to this kind of, of OCD. And that is uh, definitely our, our job, our passion, and our motivation to, to create all the skills, all the strategies, all the, the, the things to get better the quality of life in this kind of, of sufferers. Well, what about technology? What about the use of technology? We're gonna go over soon to talk about how it has changed telehealth and how it has you know, can become a tool, a treatment. What about the OC, the OCD related thought processes that people have with technology? Like for example, we've seen in the last five years a rapid increase in technology. I will imagine that a lot of these thoughts and these rituals involve people checking their Facebook, all their photos, all their likes, their Instagram, every single social media, going over the phone to see if they, they answer an email, which is, you could say that the technology has made it worse. Is, is this true or? Yes, that, that is a part of true because people that, uh, people that are checking or rechecking some uh, apps like Facebook or YouTube, they have to check in uh, a lot of time, maybe 20 or 30 times a day. Or, or in, in just some seconds. But uh, definitely, once again, the technology has created a, a high impact and get better the, the quality of life. Because um, five years ago, we, we, don't, we don't have uh, social medias as right now, uh, a Zoom or, or another APPs. In Cinco, Alejandro Ibarri, my practice office, we are working with OCD clients since 2009, 11 years ago. So that is not some new to, to in, my, in my practice office. But uh, the thing that uh, the technology has, has improved the quality and the, the, the get the treatment, the proper treatment to all the OCD community through YouTube, through Facebook, through Instagram, through, through Facebook Live. Okay, that, that is uh, the point. Technology has helped to make a OCD more aware by putting it on social media platforms, by putting it on YouTube videos, by, by having conferences that people can see online. It has magnified the awareness of OCD. And whenever you go to these conferences, it's, it's not like you just talk about the disease, but you talk about the cases and the treatment. So there are a lot of people that might be scared to go to the doctor they might be, you know, even scared telling their friends and family that they actually suffer from OCD, even though they know they, they have it. They might be scared of, of this, of the face-to-face, -face, of showing their weaknesses, their, their, their problems, even though they, they want help. But at least through the expansion of technology and the expansion of information and communication, at least they can get some tips here and then to how to make things better. Obviously, it wouldn't be the same as going to a therapy, but at least, is, is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, there are some, uh, some or many uh, research in, in OCD, in OCD in Los Angeles, in, in some institute that the, the research shows us how the, the, the technology has improved all the OCD. At least where in comparing with face-to-face, -face, technologies has improved the rituals or the, or the symptoms in OCD suffer. So that is a, 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 really, good, a really good point and a really good, um, yes, a really good information at this moment because technology is, uh, is the, the present and maybe the future in telehealth, telemedicine, in psychology, in OCD field is, is a really, really good point at this moment and maybe the future, I think it, it, it's the future. Let's, let's go back in time real quick. Let's pretend we're not in the pandemic. Let's pretend I'm interviewing you on February 10th of 2020 when everything was normal. How often do you use telehealth and 
apps to do videos and sessions to treat your patients that suffer OCD? It's a, a, a good question because uh, as I, I told you some, some minutes ago, uh, in Cinco Alejandro Ibarra, we are working with OCD community 11 years ago. We are in Seville, in south of, of Spain. We, we treat patients or clients that are in Israel, in other countries in Europe or Latin America, in Chile, Ecuador, Venezuela, or uh, Hispanic community that lives in the United States, in Miami or Detroit or New York. So definitely the technology and the, and the Skype or the Zoom, the, the, these, these platforms and this kind of, of, of APP has uh, show uh, or, or has put next to the treatment or the proper treatment to the client. And once again, that is a, a really good point uh, and, and a really good uh, present in the, in the OCD field because we are in Seville and we, we, we have a lot, of, a lot of clients that doesn't live in Seville. They are in Madrid, they are in the north of Spain, or they are in Latin America or the United States. Because in the United States, it's the same. The, the, the psychologist lives in Detroit or in Arizona, but the patient or the client is in Boston. So far away. So that is that is extremely interesting. I I wonder just to go a little bit of a, of a tangent. Twenty years ago, you wouldn't be able to do this. You wouldn't never be the patient had to be there. Okay, exactly. so you couldn't treat somebody from Detroit, Arizona, from Israel, from the north of Spain, or from the other cities like Madrid that are just as great as uh, Seville, Sevilla. So. I just wonder, why will somebody outsource their clinicians? Why will they go to you and why you to get treatment as opposed to seeing doctors in their own field? I, I can understand in the United States, there's problems with insurance, there's problems with, um, with the stigma, especially in some populations. Uh, but why, why across Spain? Why, why wouldn't see a psychologist over there? Why would they go to you? Because the, the big problem in Spain and in, in many countries are that uh, OCD specialists are few in all the countries. Here in Spain, we are four or five specialized psychologists in OCD field. They're very little. They, they, they're, they're not that many. Exactly. So here in Spain, four or five. That's few. No many psychologists specialize in OCD. In the United States, that, that is a, a big problem too. So you take for granted that it's not the same going to your mental health counselor or your clinical psychologist that is just general to get treated with OCD. It's not the same as going to an actual person that has a specialization on OCD. Exactly. That's, they get, that's a big difference. Exactly. And you don't miss uh, treating other conditions. You don't miss working with other conditions uh, or be becoming an an expert in one area has actually been more satisfying for you for your life as a professional. To to me, work with OCD suffer is uh, uh, is part of my life. I don't I don't miss another kind of or this of disorder or or, or or kind of problem because to me OCD is like my motivation is my patient. So I recommend I recommend all the psychologists that specialize in one area. Depends on, depends on in, in children or in adults, in uh, GAD or PTSD or OCD, depends on, but I, I think it's very important to specialize because you have some, uh, um, a deep information, a deep knowledge in a, just in an in a area. So that is very important to, to treat a person, to treat clients and to treat a deeply uh, disorder. So let's talk how that impacts you, the disruptor. How does treating the same condition on different patients is? Does that lead to fatigue, to burnout, to stress? Because you, I mean, there's obviously a diversity of people that have OCD across the lifespan of all races, sexual orientations, ethnicities, but for the clinician that is like you that is specializing OCD, dealing with the same condition face-to-face uh, -face with the participants and when they start talking about the rituals and you know how they got a divorce because their significant other couldn't deal with you know 
with their stress, it, doesn't that mentally, you know, decompresses you? Yeah, de depends of the of the time, depends on, on, on the season, depends on the season. Uh, it's a, a very important to combine the practice office with some sport, with go to the gym or with practice meditation to, to keep the, the mental health. There is a, a, that I recommend, that I do, and that is the, the key to reduce the impact of or the impairment or the stress uh, between the practice office and dealing with OCD patients or OCD rituals. Let's go back to the present. Let's go back after February 10. Have you seen a difference in the amount of patients that you treat telehealth to what you did before? And has this difference been like, now you, you treat 100% via Zoom, via Skype, via FaceTime, via video? Yes, de definitely the, the pandemic uh, in, in, in many patients has increased their rituals or the compulsions. Many, many patients that are dealing with, with OCD symptoms are like in dealing in silence. So after the pandemic, they are they are contact with Cinco Alejandro Ibarra with some specialists to to start to begin in the the process to begin in the path to recovery. So I I, I feel and I I have I has um, seen a, a little increase into the into the client. Real quick, what is your personal view uh, as a as a clinician as a as a psychologist uh, as an expert in OCD? not based on facts, not based on, the, on data. There are a couple of studies that show that obviously people, you know, inside their homes are suffering more of anxiety, depression, domestic violence, that was a given. And also a lot of biological conditions that could have been because they don't get um, vitamin D and so on. And, you know, their life, their, their eating habits, everything changed. Do you think that if we ever, and hopefully we do, if we ever get out of the pandemic with the vaccine, the cure, and, you know, do you, do you think these lockdowns, especially in Italy, especially in, in your country in Spain, where it got hit really hard, do you think that's going to lead to an increase in the amount of OCD patients? I think yes. I think that uh, thanks to the social media, thanks to YouTube, uh, many people uh, has identified with the videos, with the information, with uh, symptoms through Google, so that is important to um, identify the symptoms and to put into the, the proper treatment. That is the key into OCD community and OCD disorder because it's a, it's a, a, a really severe disorder and a really silent disorder. So uh, I think that it's the time to show all the information to the community and the people get into through the, the proper treatment. Especially now that people are talking more about health, now is the time to let it all out. Confess all the symptoms you have because all the symptoms in your bodies are correlated. So your Absolutely. immune system depends on a lot of things, way, way more than just um, doing exercise and, and eating. So it is possible to see an increase. Um, I will tell you, though, that between our previous meeting in Spanish and our meeting in English, um, I, I did change uh, a couple of the questions so for the bilingual population not see the same but i did went to linkedin and i did went to the uh, job search and there was way a lot of options to basically looking worldwide for tele telehealth psychologists didn't specify master didn't specify you you'll see more options now uh, before the uh, then before the pandemic almost i mean i wouldn't wouldn't be able to quantify but those jobs were definitely not there so there's a need at least of some communities to get licensed psychologists maybe not for ocd but maybe for other other conditions which means that from now on the future of psychology can actually change you can just it can just be just telehealth from now on yes i i think yes i think that uh technologies uh, going to going to change not just the present uh, 
will will change the, the future. So I think that is the the moment to to believe into technology, and I think that we the the psychologists uh, is the it's like the the moment to to believe into this tool into these skills because we are uh, we are in the right moment to to help not just OCD community to help people to help people because. Uh, this is this this exists and this is very helpful to all the community. Not just OCD people or client that suffers a depression or suffer uh, whatever it doesn't matter the the kind of problem. But the psychologist and the technology can help all the all the people. So that that is a is a present and maybe the future. So technology has improved the way you do the the way you treat your patients based on the fact that patients don't have to lose that many hours a day going to your practice or it has improved your own day of not being able to have to commute to work being able to just schedule everything and just work from home like has that helped has, has been negative have you seen you know a difference between the patients getting back like getting better only when they see you face to face and just abandoning telemedicine overall? Yes, to me, I think uh, telehealth and, and technology has improved the, the way that we, we can look or watch the present because some or many years ago, we don't have all the technology. So at this moment, in this, in this year, in 2020, we can, um, we can create the skills and the and many options to the, to the client. So to me, we are, we are not uh, like feeling change because we were, we, we were working with Skype or video WhatsApp. So I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a right moment. It's the right moment to, to, to believe in this kind of, of skills. I just, I just think people are gonna have a hard time to, to, to understand that they can see a, a psychologist Telemedicine. It's not the same as seeing a psychiatrist or some uh, familiar medicine with all, with all respect that you can just check the symptoms via, especially as a, a psychiatrist, you can just tell the symptoms, they prescribe the medication, the shorter the better because they get paid the same. But the, it, how can someone do treat such a hard condition as cognitive behavioral therapy with advanced techniques via online? Assuming that the Wi Fi will be great and nothing will. Yes, uh, to me, uh, for example, it's a, a, a very big or a, a important to 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 work with the with the with the mental health. I don't need to touch you. I don't. I, I need to 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 look your your some obsessions or your rituals or your behavior to get improved or to get into the treatment, to do the ERP, the proper treatment, the exposure with response prevention, to create all the, all the tools to get better. And that is my, my patient, my, my motivation and my job. So that is not depends of the face-to-face. -face. It depends of my experience, of my, of my knowledge, my deeply knowledge, once again, in, in OCD, in, in ERP, it's very important to, to, to how to manage your symptoms or manage your condition or manage your treatment. That is, that, that is the, the key, that is the point. Not so, the face-to-face, -face, not the not touch to you, no, not necessarily. But what about exposure? You said that a lot of things are with exposure. So someone has a ritual regarding the water of the sink doesn't the beginning of the making you know testing exposing you to the ritual doesn't that start on an actual private of office where the this clinician goes to like to the bathroom with the person and you know they start you know visualizing what happens how does that work now we can do a exposure in imagination in imaginal exposure with your 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 eyes are closed so imagine the depends on the situation and, and I can create definitely. Uh, so if, if you are a sufferer with uh, rituals of cleaning or washing your hands or take a, a, a shower around one or two hours, I can go with the, with the camp to your bathroom 
or to your office or to your uh, kitchen, for example, to do or not the rituals. That is an advantage into uh, this kind of technology. And I do in my practice office every day, do the imaginary exposure and the exposures in life. Okay. And meditation and the mindfulness or ACT uh, techniques or exposure with response prevention, ERP. It is, it's not a problem. It's not the face to face. It's the experience, it's the tools, it's the knowledge about OCD and about all the tools that we create to get your treatment, proper treatment. So technology is not disrupting the way the psychologist treats the patients as technology usually disrupts. They're, they're getting more disrupted by OCD. So uh, one last question uh, in terms of in terms of the future, are you, are you optimistic of the of what what can happen? Like in in terms of after the pandemic, the amount of mental health. I know Spain not only they suffer a lot of numbers, but I don't even see a lot of initiatives from the government to you know. If you're telling me that a country like Spain, not um, Iran, a country like Spain in the West, fully developed has part of the European Union, has, it is known for actually medical tourism, okay? So in a country like Spain, you're telling me, you give me an example, there are only five licensed clinical psychologists in OCD. Is there more incentives of the government to try to promote, you know, the specialization of? Yes, maybe it's a, a problem with the government, but the truth is the, the psychologists doesn't doesn't matter the the OCD the OCD as disorder the psychologists prefer the anxiety disorders or the, or, or prefer the depression because it's easier working with OCD community is very hard it's very difficult you have to to work uh, many hours a day you have to you have to be uh, Many many times with your with your phone or with in your office. So uh, because it doesn't stay there in your office. A patient with OCD in their clinician, they must have this communication. It's not just once a week. I'll see you by. You exactly. feel that it's an actual ongoing ongoing thing. So it's not that there's few psychologists because the government is, didn't. It's not promoting anything. It's just psychologists overall think that the condition is so tough that they just don't see themselves specializing in that. Absolutely. Which, which makes you a game changer. <laughs> Thank you yes, so much. There is a platform in the United States that uh, the name is OCD Game Changers. OCD Game Changers, yes. That is a, a, a OCD super a, a peer support that the, her name is Chrissy Hodge. Okay, OCD Game Changer is a non-profit organization to help and um, to spread the awareness in all, in all the world and all the OCD community. So follow her, Chrissy Hodge, or treatment for OCD and OCD game changers. Definitely, I will put the information in the description in the video of the Disruptive Technologies. Thank you so much, clinician psychologist Alejandro Ibarra from Seville, Spain, thank you for your time. Thank you, Luigi, for having me here in your video. Looking forward to see you soon, thank you. Bye-bye.